We respect our elders in here. Amen. All right, well, let's do this. We're going to get into this message. Y'all been enjoying the distraction series. Oh, the one this morning made, I put it on YouTube. The three religious rights. Why are people crazy? Now, y'all remember what I talked about in religious rights. So I get on there and the comments. See, brother, Christmas is actually pagan. To... Did you watch this video? Uh -huh, brother, see, pork is filthy. I, what is wrong with people? Why would, you just watched. <laughs> Man, Jesus has to come quick. He has to come. People are, the spirit of dumb is just, my, people are so dumb. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash distractions for, look at somebody and say, mammon. Mammon. Amen. Ooh, look at that screen. Ain't that pretty? Oh, that he don't know what's behind him. All he see is what's in front. That'll preach right there. Let me stay right there. <laughs> screen make you preach, don't it? Hey, man, some of y'all seeing stuff on that screen. Look at this city in the background. Hey, man. Stuff going on. People in the building waving. <laughs> You like that screen? You like that screen, Grammy? Ain't that nice? That's nice. Man, she ain't seen it yet. No. Oh. That's Mammon. That's the spirit that is pushing him under that crate. And that thing is ugly. Hey, Amen. You, you ought to just want to get rid of all your money right now. Pass the offering plate. <laughs> oh, that's attached to my money. Here, here, Pastor. Open that box up, y'all gave me. Just come on. Just, just get rid of it. <laughs> Cause that's an ugly thing right there. Let's define. So mammon in the New Testament is commonly thought to mean money, material wealth, or any entity that promises wealth. So the way Jesus, disciples, the way they would use it. Basically, they were referring to money, but they were referring to an entity associated with greedy pursuit of gain. Mammon's greatest power is the influence he can exert over the human mind and heart. He inspires eat envy, greed, and lust so potent that even good men can be driven to corruption over money. Folk will sell their body over money. Deal with the consequences later. Folks will stab you in the back, hate their parents, hate you. Folks will exchange their ticket to heaven for money. Usually, mammon's evil grip, anything that can grip you, but mammon's evil grip leads to obsession. Once you fall under his spell, you will struggle to focus on anything other than the treasure he has used to tempt you, and you will do almost anything to get your hands on it. Y'all know folks like that? Because of this ability to monopolize a person's energy. Oh, the ability to monopolize, take ownership of your energy. Many theologians describe mammon as enslaving men. That's from mythology.net, talking about the mythical being, mammon. Amen. Look at somebody and say, get off the grind. The grind was, a, was never meant for you to be on it. Stop saying that. You're not on the grind. God has opened the door for you to be able to work and have something. But you're not grinding to impress. You're not grinding to be better than someone else. 
We don't have that spirit at this church. I thank God for that. Nobody comparing what they have and mine is better than yours and I'm this and you're not and all that. We don't do that. Amen. We don't invite people to our house to show off and show you and take you on a world tour to show you what we, you know, this look, look at all that God has done. Really? Do you want us to see what God has done or do we, you want us to see what you have done? Which one is it? That grind, boy, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. Amen. You know, some of the greatest preachers I know don't have no money. Because money isn't a prerequisite of preaching the gospel. Oh, somebody just, amen. So we need to quit equating that. Oh, he must be blessed of God because he's doing what God said because he has something. That don't mean anything. Does he have the word? Does he have the truth? Is he willing to preach that and sacrifice everything for it? Amen. That's why don't be coming telling me what Elon Musk and Kanye talking about. Why you talk? Don't come tell me what they saying. I don't care. Neither one of them will give it up for Christ. Elon said, mentioned Jesus one time and now they're saying he just all oh, don't see he's going to change the world he's going to change it all right he said he's about to unleash this neural lace I told y'all about it in Arrow Man 4 he said it's almost ready for FDA approval FDA why is the F FDA approval that must mean that it's going to be administered as a drug that's the food and drug administration so that must mean to put this in you they gonna use a needle food medicine sounds familiar you know sound like somebody preached that before don't it yeah you just I mean Kanye you think he's a prophet oh these folk, and I just get it all day. Ooh, look what he said. He said what you said. Ooh, look what he said. Somebody sent me and told me, brother, this brother right here is preaching. You need to watch this. He said, I, I looked at it, lazy bone. Okay, I'm... I'm not listening to nobody whose name is lazy. And he named himself lazy. Lazy bones. That means he don't do nothing. Brother, I don't want to hear truth. That ain't truth. Is he saved? Is he called of God? Then he ain't exposing nothing. You can't expose the darkness of the industry if you're dark. Oh, I wish folk would quit. I mean, they sent me. Now, 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 don't listen to the cussing. He, he used a lot of cussing in this, but he's teaching the truth. He's not teaching the truth and cussing. But I've been doing this for a minute. They doing it because I did it for a minute. So I don't, I, I don't need to watch a degenerate person who's not sold out to God bring me truth. I don't want truth packaged up like that. A Kanye preacher, man, he saying you preaching your message. He just, brother, he just did a song with Cardi B. That's who that's who you you, you listening to. That's who you following. That's that's the truth. Hey, man, I don't even know how I went there, but I guess I needed to. Cause they been they been getting on my nerves. Folks, get on your nerves. 
lady sent me an inbox this morning. Uh, pastor, watch this video. And there's some old video on uh, Negro land. You know, usually I just delete, but sometimes I get a little froggy. <laughs> so I said, uh, I'll pass. Oh, but brother, iron sharpens iron. So I just admonish you as, a, as your sister in the Lord to watch this, because iron sharpens iron. I said, well, which one of us is iron? <laughs> and then I deleted it. I didn't send it. <laughs> Folk just, I mean... I don't owe you an explanation of why I don't ascribe to no false doctrine of Negro land. You done stumbled up on the wrong video, you done learned some junk, and now you want to see, take my temperature on it, yeah. see what I think, and then if I don't want to watch it, something's wrong with me. Yeah. I watch what I want to watch, yeah. and I watch it when I want to watch it. And if I don't want to watch it, I won't watch it. I don't have to watch everything. Just because you sin it, I ain't got to watch it. Brother, you watch that video yet? No, I told you I wasn't going to watch it. Oh, so you just can't receive. I can't receive it from you. I don't even know you. I don't like you and don't know you. Man. Let me keep going. Hey. A major distraction in the lives of believers today is striving for wealth and success. Is that not a distraction? Yeah. Everybody, look at somebody and say, everybody's not going to be rich. <laughs> look, at, look at somebody and say, most people aren't going to be rich. But it becomes a distraction when you're constantly wanting to be rich or have more than others or striving for wealth and success. We all need money. Woo! Anybody need money? Yes, Amen. This is not an anti-money message now. Oh, don't get me wrong. We all need money to survive and it does answer most of our earthly cares, don't it? Money will answer a whole lot. So money is not, and look at somebody say, money, money. is not an evil thing. If your money's evil, give it to me. I will sanctify it. Amen. Money within itself is not an evil thing. Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry. Somebody, yeah! <laughs> that feeling married <laughs> nah you drunk it's not married you crying that's not married <laughs> but a feast is made for laughter and wine maketh merry but money answereth how many things the bible said money answereth all things so nothing can really be wrong with it if it's an answer money will answer amen just don't ask too much of it. No, amen. The motive behind our striving and grinding is the key to understanding the presence of mammon. It's the motive. The motive behind your striving and grinding. Are you trying to take care of your family? Take care of your wife, your kids? Are you trying to take care of your home? Are you trying to take care of your debts? Are you trying to take care of business? Or are you trying to prove something? That's the motive. If our heart is not right, our pursuit will not be right. Amen. First Timothy 6 and 10. For the love of money is the root of what? All oh, like old folks say, the root. It's the root. That's how my mama said. The root of all evil. Which, while some coveted it after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves. See, you chasing money makes you err error from the faith. Yeah, you're going to abuse scriptures. 
You're going to misunderstand certain scriptures. You're going to try to proof text your desire to have money. Yeah. Because you covered it after it. So you're going to err from the faith. And then the worst part, you're going to hurt yourself. Inflict sorrows on yourself. Because you're going to lose friends and family. Loved ones and people that could have helped you. Are going to abandon you. Because of your pursuit. The spirit of mammon attaches itself to money. So it's not the money that's bad. It's the spirit that attaches itself to the money. And influences people to trust it. Instead of God. Mark 10 and 24, and the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again and said unto them, children, listen, how hard is it for them that what? Not them that have riches, but them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. Nothing wrong with having riches, but when you trust in the riches, you make it hard to enter into the kingdom of God. Can I keep going? Yeah. It's going to be quick. I always say that, don't I? I ain't quit lying. It's never quick. <laughs> Inferiority makes people strive for money, fame, and fortune. So all you need is an inferiority complex. Yeah, be born in the hood, in the ghetto, without anything. No. Yeah. But then see the pimp driving the Lincoln with a diamond in the back, the sunroof top. Y'all ain't saved. Whoever finished that, I will meet you at the altar at the end of this message. You're just ratchet. That Lord, forgive me for leading them on. I baited them. My fault, my bad, my bad. I baited y'all. Jason, them over there like, I don't. My bad. Uh, <laughs> but you're in the hood and you saw that and so growing up poor or whatever, you were measured or you were talked bad about or somebody, you know, made you feel less than, you felt inferior, so you promised yourself. Y'all, more folks are in trouble right now for the stuff they promised themselves. Because once you speak that, it becomes alive. It becomes an entity that stays with you, speaks to you, pushes you, forces you away from people that can help you. It's mammon. You spoke it and you created the entity, mammon. Mammon whispers, you're going to get it one day. You're going to have it one day. Yeah, because of inferiority. You felt inferior. Maybe your home, maybe y'all were poor. Maybe your dad wasn't there and some of your friend's dad was there. You promised yourself. You saw the way he would bring them gifts and take care of them. You promised yourself, when I get old enough, I'm going to have this. I'm going to have it. I'm going to give myself this. Just wait, just wait. Yeah. That's the story of most musicians and singers and folks like that that are miserable. They have money and they have everything that they set out to get. Everything but goodness. You can't be good with that train of thought. No, you got to do folks wrong. You got to betray folks. You got to talk against folks. Talk about folks. Yeah, that's what mammon does. So that inferiority makes people strive for money, fame, and fortune. These should never be the desires of true believers. Why are we striving for money, fame, and fortune? And we have Jesus. And Jesus didn't. The Bible said he came to make no reputation of himself. Jesus could have walked around driving whatever the hottest chariot was. He could have had the latest everything. Linen suit. They had linen. They had linen, Amory, didn't they? Yeah. Could have had the ephod suit. I need the suit version of this. 
Yeah, he could have rode around in the latest whatever, the horses, the stallions, the whatever they are. Amen. Yeah. But he chose to make no reputation of himself. So if you're going to serve him, you can't be trying to make a reputation of yourself. True believers should only strive for God's will for them. Well, it is God's will for me to be rich. How you know? Because it was prophesied on me. <laughs> Psalms 37 and 4. Delight thyself also into, in the Lord, and he shall what? Give thee the desires of thy heart. Please the Lord like you are. He's going to give you your desires. Amen. Amen. That's it. Your desire has to be him. God decides who will have and who he will allow to receive financial gain. I thought he didn't have respect to persons. It's not, it has nothing to do with respect to persons. It's people that can deal with it and people that can't. People are rich for a reason. And people are not rich for a reason. You can give some of the not rich folks, they can win the lottery and be not rich again. You can take all the money from a rich person and they'll be rich again. Now, nothing to do respect the person. That's do with the character. Some folks can just prosper that way. But you don't decide it. God decides it. Look at somebody and say, let God be God. It's his sovereignty and understanding of us. <laughs> See? Those two things. It's his sovereignty and understanding of us that allows grace for riches. His sovereignty and his understanding of us. Some of us, he, thought he can't give you too much or you won't need him anymore. And that's okay. You have enough. Everybody in here has enough. See, somebody not clapping. Not me. Yes, you do. Pastor, you ain't seen my ledger. <laughs> you have enough. Everyone in here has enough. Amen. If you don't have enough, that means you need to scale down what you need. Simple. Oh, I don't see a lot of hand claps back there. I'm going to have to take a walk back there. I want y'all involved too. Yes. Yeah. But anyway, everybody, all of us, we have more than, that's why you have to thank God. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. yeah, that's why they're trying to get rid of Thanksgiving. Get rid of Thanksgiving. Oh, that's pagan. Oh, you don't understand the history. Oh, you don't do that. Man, I can sit at my table, eat a turkey, and give thanks. Ain't no history around eating turkey. What is that? If I eat this turkey on this day, it's recognizing some kind of pagan deity because it's Thursday. It's a Thursday turkey. Ooh, and you made the dressing too? Oh, no. Brother, you so far from God, you have no idea. A turkey? And dressing? No, you don't want Thanksgiving. You don't want to give thanks. You just don't want to. Just say that. Thanksgiving reminds you of a horrible time. Amen. I ate dressing three, four days in a row, ain't it? I know you don't do that, but I do. My dressing was bomb. I ate that dressing, man. I woke up in the morning thinking about it, trying to figure out how it would taste for breakfast. It's great for breakfast. I'll, I, I'll make that mental note. Yeah. You just don't want to give God thanks, but we have to give him thanks because he supplied all of our needs. Everyone in here, all of your needs have been supplied. Now, there may be some wants that you're dealing with, but 
and you have enough. Look at somebody and say, you have enough. I'm telling you, you have enough. First Timothy 6 and 17, charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high minded nor trust in uncertain riches. What are uncertain riches? All riches. All riches are uncertain. At any minute, Joe Biden could wake up, think he's hitting his morphine button, and he accidentally hit the bank button. <laughs> Did he just launch a nuclear warhead? <laughs> and uh, all your money will be worthless. They launch that bomb, you not, your first stop will not be the bank. They're going to say, you got 11 minutes. You're going to hear that whoo. That means you got 11 minutes. You are not going to Bank of America. You're not logging in. No computer, nowhere. That's because all riches are uncertain. So he's saying, charge those that are rich to not think that they're better than others. Amen. Amen. And don't have that false humility. I, I can't, that's worse. I'd rather you just be a old prideful jive sucker. But don't be that, you know, you think you better, but you try to act like you not. Oh, that makes me sick. I don't like people like that. Oh, you got to one up everybody. Oh man, brother, yeah, yeah. I, you know, our family, we took a little trip up to the, you know, up to the uh, Oklahoma, you know, the Oklahoma. <laughs> brother, we just got back from Dubai. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, Oklahoma's, Oklahoma's fun. Oklahoma's nice. It's nice in the fall. In the autumn, with the leaves, it's really nice. <laughs> now, we were at the waterless edge pool with a sheik from Afghanistan and his family. He had a lovely family, a lovely family. But, but Oklahoma, Oklahoma is really nice. They got the cowboys there. I think they got horses and stuff. It's really nice. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand people like that. I'll be wondering, and I'll be sitting there. It'd be so funny, I'll be sitting there and the elders usually with me. And we just be sitting there looking at each other like, is he really finna rattle off all his accomplishments in this two minutes? And I ain't seen you in 20 years? Brother, you gonna catch me up? <laughs> Don't catch me up. <laughs> Brother, it's been 20 years for a reason. I don't want you to catch me up. I stayed away on purpose. I knew where you were. I knew where you were. I said, go over there. Good grace. What is wrong with people? But charge their parents <laughs> in this world. That they be not high-minded, nor trust in their riches, is what it's saying. Because our riches are uncertain. But in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. So God has no problem. Some folks are going to be rich. God is going to make some folks rich. He's going to allow them to be rich. Because he trusts them and he knows what they're going to do. That's why Abraham turned down the, he turned down the blessing from the king of Sodom. He said, I don't want your spoils. No, no, you keep those. He said, no man make me rich. Because God had a plan for him. God said, nope, what you're going to do, you're going to use my money. Amen. Amen. You know, when I was growing up, I had all my friends. We all, you know, we was all musicians and all of them were signing deals. My wife remember this, signing these deals, getting, these, getting this money and all this. And man, I just, I just, oh man, I was the turned down guy. I had turned down everything. They come over to me, I can't take that. I can't do it. I can't sign that deal. I can't do that. I can't do it. It's like, dude, why? Why? I mean, they would be begging me, man, come on, man. We all grew up together. We, you got to do it. I said, man, I can't do it. Now, I didn't know, but God didn't want me involved like that because of what he had me to do. They would have cut me off in a heartbeat once I spoke the message God gave me. 
so they couldn't make me rich or they would have had ownership. So, yeah, it was hurting and it was terrible. Then I had a car with tape on top <laughs> to cover the sunroof. Tape. Packing tape. And boy, I was driving it and didn't care. I didn't care. I had a car that used to write my name and Sabatha's name out of the exhaust pipe behind us. I mean, that you knew we had just left because you had cancer when we left. We, we left something with you. You couldn't breathe. Am I telling the truth? And, I, and man, they would drive up to my apartment in the, all them cars and all of this, and I'd look at them, I'd be like, dude, that's, man, this car is cold. Take me for a ride, please. And then after I go for a ride, now take me back. Now they never say, baby, we got to do something different. I got to do this, man. I thought, man, I got a hat. No, never. That's for them. That's for them because God had something different for me. I said, I'll wait. Amen. I'll wait. Amen. Because when God bless me, I'm going to still be a man. That's my blessing. My blessing, I'm going to still walk straight. I, I, I don't try not to get too graphic. But my goodness. Amen. 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 I ain't playing. No, man, I just had lying. No, no. And I know what God wants me to do, so I'm just going to do what he does. And if it yields any money or whatever, good. If it don't, God's people going to be blessed through what I'm preaching. Because I'm going to say what God tells me to say. That's it. And that's the way it's always been. Oh, and it's not changing at 53. Are you crazy? Told God the other day, Lord, I have absolutely everything I have ever wanted. Everything I desired and then some. That's not bragging. That's where God placed me. He said, I'm going to do this because I know you're not going to change. Has the message changed? Amen. The little chubby Craig that got up to preach part one. Couldn't afford to get his hair cut. Couldn't afford the clothes he wore on that video. Has the message changed? No. And it's not going to change. Amen. Somebody hate me. That's all right. Woo. I'm asleep tonight. And I'm not going to think about you. <laughs> Amen. But God decides. He decides. That's why he said charge those that are rich in this world. Meaning there's going to be some that are rich. And he didn't condemn the ones that are rich. He said just act right with your riches. That's right. That's right. That's right. Seeking riches will cause a person to ooh mishandle loved ones. Mm -hmm. To seek riches you have to mishandle loved ones. Then you're going to forsake good relationships. Because a good relationship consists of a person that tells you, hey, brother, maybe you, you shouldn't do that. Now you're just kind of chasing. And that chase is going to lead you astray. And then betray those that are in their life to help them. Folks say it all the time. We have our guys telling me, brother, you don't want nobody to have nothing but you. I say, brother, that's not it. I'm just trying to teach you some principles. So whenever you do get it, you keep it. Don't you want to keep it? Anybody can go buy a car they can't keep. They do that all the time, don't they? <laughs> they go buy a car that they can't keep. And get them few little who and ahs. You can't put none of that on a payment. Let's turn all these who's and ahs into <laughs> this first payment. Yeah. So I'm trying to help you handle it. And be ready for it so you can keep it. But now they think that, nah, brother, you in my way. You holding me back. You won't allow me to go forth. Okay, go forth. 20 years later, man, I made a mistake. I wish I had a... Ah. Yeah, I just try to help you. Mammon comes with a hefty price. Yeah, mammon's going to take everything. 
Psalms 52 and 7. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. Nothing wrong with the riches. He trusted in the riches and strengthened himself in his what? You got wicked because you trusted in riches. Can I keep preaching? Oh, uh, some folk ain't enjoying this message. They had a plan tomorrow they was going to go buy something they didn't need. Social media fuels the desire to have things and achievements so they can be flaunted to followers and used mm, 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 to exonerate those that may have overlooked, have been overlooked in their upbringing. So because somebody overlooked you, you gonna post everything online so everybody can look at you now. Y'all said I wouldn't have anything. But look at me now. Well, we understand. Social media is the highlight reel. You posting all the highlights. Amen. You ain't going to post the L's. Just the W's. <laughs> Amen. And you don't see all the debt. All the folks you owe. All the folks that hate you that you hate. Amen. All the sin and debauchery in your life. You ain't posting that. You're just going to post what you have to try to make folks see who you are now. Y'all said I wouldn't be nothing. And now look at me. Proverbs 27 and 2. The Bible said let another man praise thee. So your page shouldn't be you praising yourself. Amen. Don't try to twist that. Well that's what I do. I post all my stuff online and I let people praise me. <laughs> You're going to hell. Is twisted that scripture. That's not what that scripture means. Let another man praise thee. That's what I'm doing. And not thine own mouth. I'm not saying it. They are. <laughs> but the Bible says that don't be showing off. Let somebody else, if they notice it and they say, hey man, that's nice, that's good. A stranger and not thine own lips. So just hush about the stuff you got. Now, some stuff is visible and folks see it. You got a nice jacket and everybody see it and you, you, you want to, you know, do a little spin or something. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I might do that. Talking to somebody, you got some new shoes, you just want to prop your shoe up high and act like you tying your shoes. I might do that. So that's okay. I mean, we want to look nice. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You want to look nice? You get your hair done. You done spent $8,000 at that appointment. You want somebody to know this. Sis, your hair. Like, That's right. Yes. 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 I can't pay my bills and I'm getting evicted, but that's it. the hair is popping. <laughs> can't afford to take it nowhere, but it's popping. Amen. God gonna send a thunderstorm. As soon as you walk out that salon. Boom. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Man, when we was going through financially, me and my wife, my wife ain't never asked to go nowhere to get her hair done. She was doing her hair by herself. She was doing it herself. I couldn't afford that, man. Hair appointments back then was $40. $40? You know how many cans of tomato sauce? Spaghetti sauce. $40? Hey, man, she didn't, she didn't go. She couldn't leave the house. Now, David, what, David, man, he started doing your hair for a little while. Helping us out. You know, David was helping us out because I could, hey. I'd be like, David, man, I mean, can I write you a song or something? I mean, can <laughs> we <laughs> But yeah, man, we have to do what we have to do. Folks don't understand that now. They just don't understand that. They see what you're driving now, whatever. Woo, see, Pastor, think he's something. Brother, you have no idea. You have no idea. And the crazy thing is you have no idea how much that stuff don't mean to me. 
My wife would be the first to tell you. I'd stop. I don't care. People that desire to show their prosperity to the world, listen, are only doing it because they are insecure and feel inferior when it comes to character and purpose. See, when your character and purpose is strong, you don't have to prove nothing to nobody. It proves itself. Galatians 5 and 26. Let us not be desirous of what? Vain glory. Provoking one another and then envying one another. Hey, do you know you can't be them? Whoever it is you're envying, you can't be them. You don't have the character to be them because you're envious. You'll never be them. And nobody will ever think you're them. So you best just be you. Amen? I know I'm preaching in here. This is one of them touchy messages. Amen. Folks, it's going to act up Christmas. All in Target. I just got a Target on everything. In Target. I'm going to get this. I can get that. No, you can't afford it. Racking up a credit card bill. The day after Christmas... Boom, 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 boom. What have I done? Then you before the Lord Jesus. Lord. God forgive me. Lord. I know I said this last year and the year before. God is not speaking. He has nothing to do with your credit card. You took that credit card in there and overspent. How you calling on the Lord? What are you going to do? Get in the computer. Let me change some numbers in Jesus' name. You better hear this message I'm preaching. Do I need to walk over there? Because I I just don't see a lot of responses over there. Y'all listen to me over there at work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Look at me now. Mammon is a deceptive spirit. Listen to this. Because it will make you think you are glorifying God for your wealth and material gain when it is really you that you are glorifying. You think you are doing it for God so that you can have a great testimony of all that God has done. But you don't go out to get a testimony. I'm going to create a testimony (laughs) by my grind. One of these days I'll be able to get that mic in church. And say, <laughs> this is when they really messed up. I'm just doing this so I can bless the church and the ministry. No, you don't grind so you can bless the ministry. Yeah, that's mammon. It's a trick. You think you're doing it for that, but that's not why you're doing it. You're doing it for yourself. It's really you that you're glorifying. Outwardly, you praise God, but inwardly, you are seeking the approval of others to feel better about your deficits. Can I say it one more time? Outwardly, you praise God. Oh, this is God's doing. Oh, yes. Yes, what gets on the head is going to get on the rest of the body. No. You are seeking the approval of others to feel better about your deficits. Yeah. Proverbs 21 and 2. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord does what? What's in your heart, brother? What is making you feel you need to be rich? I hope y'all are enjoying this message. I am. Amen. Summary. During the holiday season, many people get depressed because they cannot buy or receive the things they desire. This is mammon's busiest season because people will go broke trying to impress others with what they have. Whether it's elaborate spending on presents or decorating and preparing a house for visitors, etc. People show off what they have 
all for the opinions of those that had a negative opinion of them at some point. Let me say that again. People show off what they have all for the opinions of those that had a negative opinion of them at some point. This pattern is now broadcast on the internet and social media so much so that people upload their entire existence online as proof that they are somebody. Mammon has become a huge distraction for believers. Many cannot serve God, trust God, or even live for God because their desire is to what? Get money, Get money houses, cars, attention, views, lights, etc. They have made themselves into idols and mammon is managing their motives and decision making. Some Christians cut off family, friends, churches, etc. that do not give them the accolades they desire. I thank God we're not a title-driven church here. Everybody gets treated the same. Folks have left this church because I would not elevate them. Yeah, I would not elevate them. But I'm like, brother, why would I elevate you? Who are you? Well, at my last church, I was the brother. You should have stayed there. I remember somebody told me that, that brother at my last church I used to do this, do this and I talked to the pastor at the last church he said he didn't do none of that <laughs> he got mad because I wouldn't let him do none of that I said well he's just a little lying wonder ain't he <laughs> crazy self <laughs> folk crazy <laughs> yeah they'll leave a church Leave family, whatever, because you're not giving them the accolades and making, you're not gaslighting them and making them feel like they something. I want you to know this stuff. We all around the dinner table. Yeah, but uh, as soon as y'all finish eating, you got to come out and see the car. <laughs> Brother, we saw it online. You did a whole <laughs> premiere <laughs> on live. We all saw it, brother. But yeah. And they get mad at family. <laughs> they think they better. They, 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 you know, they can't handle who we are. They, they can't handle uh, who we are. I, we make them feel in fear. We know, we know. That's why we don't come around as much. <laughs> are you crazy? Sometimes people just want to love you for who you are. And it has nothing to do with what you have. You don't know how to love like that? You don't know how to love for real? And that's why you have no friends. Real friends don't hang around people like that. Yeah, they don't hang around some man. Exam Look at somebody say, examine yourself. Examine yourself and make sure you're not trying to show your highlight reel to folks. Man, I'm going to keep on preaching. I don't care how many folks don't clap. They participate in dishonest schemes to get money and get involved in all kinds of things that go against God's moral standards. Some even upload sexy pictures and videos just to get views and followers to earn money. That's the big thing. Sexy. Supposed to be Christians. God's girl. And I mean butt all out in the picture. What God is that? For likes and views. Amen. And be careful, save folks. Any save folks in here? Amen. You can't upload every picture. Some of the pictures are too sexy for the internet. Amen. And don't ask your husband, he's in love with you. Ask the Holy Ghost. Sometimes the husband's eyes ain't right. Oh, yeah, I like that picture. It don't belong on. <laughs> I'm not supposed to like it. You're supposed to like it. <laughs> when we go to some people and say, hey, man, you know, you uh, 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 talk to the lady and say, hey, you know, you need to close, put, put something on cover. Well, my husband approved of it. But <laughs> he married you. 
But nobody should see that but him. Amen. Put that up. Put it up. Don't be... And you know, see, this is where folk get the line. You know when that picture is inappropriate. Oh, you know. You know, something tell you. It, and you know you have that look when you uploading it. <laughs> hey, man, we can't preach to these young folk in here because they mamas is on there. We trying to teach the young folks, hey, be, be, be concerned, cover yourself, all that, and then mom on there. Girl, if you don't get... Mama! Mama! <laughs> Let me close this message out. Amen. But y'all know I'm telling the truth. Hey Amen. We saved in here, man. With certain stuff, we, ain't, we, we just don't post that. Amen. We don't post that. That's a dishonest scheme to get money. You got to call somebody. You got to become a stumbling block for someone else. So you can come up. That's wrong. That's wrong. According to the word. None of this is becoming of a Christian. Your financial path should not hurt or harm people. Your desire to be rich should not hurt or harm people. Your, your grind should not hurt or harm people. Nor should it isolate you from family and friends. And it should never go against God's desire for you. Amen. God blesses us when we do things his way. When we acquire wealth, fame, and prominence without God's hand, then mammon is our God. Oh, I've preached in here today. Amen. Matthew 6 and 24, Jesus said, no man can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold or keep one of them and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Everyone stand to your feet. Oh, this was a deep message right here. Yeah, because God don't, man, he don't want us worshiping things and coming under the power of a spirit that causes us to compete with others and show off to others and make others see what we've accomplished and hear all of our great feats and lift us up as if we're better than others. It's not who we are as believers. The Bible told us to esteem others better than ourselves. Amen. Amen. So we're going to trust and believe God. Everyone, just bow your heads where you are because we want this spirit. And well, just come up. If, 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 if that's you and you want to make sure that this spirit, mammon, is, you're not on the grind too much or chasing dollars or this kind of thing, you may not be doing it to be rich, but just working too much, not spending the time with your family. You, you begin to focus on things and all of that. You want to say, hey, you know what? I want God to fix this so that my priorities will line up. This is why I do what I do. This is why. Some of you may be facing contracts and big moves financially to do certain things and you're uneasy about them because they may change you or compromise your character in some kind of way and you don't want to be guilty of that. So that's you just come on up. We want to make sure that we're in line with what God wants us to be and what he wants us to have and who he wants us to be. We want to be able to handle it when we have it. The Bible said the blessings of the Lord, when God blesses you, it adds no sorrow. So if it's adding sorrow, who did it come from? It's mammon. So we want to trust God. And, and men, I'm, hey man, men working two, three jobs, that is not God. So come up if that's you. You don't, you don't need to be working that much. If you're single, you can work 10 jobs. Don't come up here. 
You, I'm talking about those that have families, husbands and wives. You got, I mean, you got a wife, you got kids and all that, and you can't spend any time with them. That's a curse of mammon. That's mammon. You come up here, get that broken off. God will fix your situation where you can work a job, be off on weekends. You can be here at church, all of that. Fellowship, you be at Heroes. You'll be at all the fellowship. God will work it out. I've seen him do it constantly. He'll do it. I want you out there on the grind all the time. You're going to fall out of love with your family and forget why you're working. You don't spend that time with them. Anyone else? We're going to trust God in here. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message. God, thank you for this series on distractions. Thank you, Father God, for showing us the things that get in our way of being close to you. And the things that get in our way that send us on the course and paths that are not of you. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for giving us this kind of truth in this hour. When we're faced with so many temptations, we're faced with so many opportunities to make financial moves, but they may not be expedient. They may not be ideal. It may not be a good thing to do. And these things are constantly before us. Help us to make the right choice, Lord. Help us to make the right decision. Help us to not trust in riches. Trust in those things. But God, help us to just keep trusting you. Whether we're rich or not, whether we have more than we need or whether we have just enough. Father God, we will thank you. We will give you praise for it. And we will not allow the enemy to tempt us with riches. And everyone lift your hands. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray over this congregation. I break the spirit of mammon off of each and every one. However it got there, however it got on them. Father God, whatever is pushing them to grind, whatever is pushing them to show others what they have, whatever is pushing them, that inferiority, that trauma, whatever happened. Father God, I break that off right now in the name of Jesus. Mammon, you must leave. You will not move through this congregation and make people feel inferior, make people feel away, make people feel they're better than others. We won't have it in this setting. So, Father God, we come against the Spirit right now by your power and we rebuke mammon in the name of Jesus that it will not hinder the progress of your people. And God, we just thank you once again for all that we have. Thank you, Lord, for the clothes, the food, the, the, the money, the extra money. Father God, thank you, Lord, for the trips we're able to take every now and then, the, the drive, the gas money. Thank you, Lord, for the rent. Thank you, Lord, for the car note. Thank you, Lord, for the loan payment. Thank you, Lord, for all that you provided us with. Thank you, Lord, for giving us gifts. And we're able to give gifts. Thank you, Lord, for taking such good care of us. All of your promises, we thank you for it. In the name that is above every name, we pray. Amen. 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 You may go to your seats. Please don't walk. Don't leave the building. Go to your seats, but hug somebody while you're walking and say, Mammon got to let me go. I'm not grinding for Mammon. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.